All right, guys, Tachi Kwara back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome to our interview series for the pre-Kickoff Classic type stuff. Going to try and get a load of pro players on to talk to them about how things are prepping for the Kickoff Classic. Talk about some stuff that's going on lately. Talk about their preparations for the first event of the season, which is rather later than we thought it might have been. But Simp, how are you doing, my friends? It's, uh, well, it's good to have you back on a piece of content, baby. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing good. Uh, I feel like I haven't been an interviewer like talking to anyone seen in a while so it definitely feels good working on yourself you know how it is yeah yeah you know with the game and all just doing my best yeah, yeah of course you know I'm, seen... I'm, 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 i have been public enemy number one recently but it's all good just gotta well, draw some more viewers in yeah i mean i'm, I'm glad you mentioned it because that's where i wanted to start with you a couple of things yeah. just to um you know what's been going on lately then we'll talk about the event itself so like you know there's been some discussions going on the timeline lately i know especially there was the kind of the sense of discussion about the content and there was a whole yeah. tipping thing that people got really upset about, right? Um, it seems like people are ready to to paint FaZe and yourself as a villain to some degree. Uh, like the new villains going into the season, right? I'm sure part of that stems from how good you guys are, especially last year. Um, like, what do you think about that? Like, are you kind of on board to embrace that role or do you not really see yourself in that, in that light? Um, I mean, I can't really speak for the team because I don't know how they really feel about it, but, like, I really, like, I'm at a point to where I don't really, like, I care what the fans think, obviously, like, obviously they're important, but I don't really care what they think about me anymore, and, like, I'm just, I don't want to, like, you know, try and put on a fake act or anything, and, like, yeah, maybe I some tweet some questionable stuff sometimes, but in my head it sounds different, which is tough sometimes, as as it is at Twitter sometimes, but, I mean, yeah, I'm just... Just doing me, and hopefully the fans aren't too harsh with me. Yeah, so. there's always going to be phase fans. That's how it is, right? I, I think, like, yeah. yeah, part of it comes from um, just the fact, that I guess, you guys were so good last year. I think that certainly kind of helped the case. And it's also guys like, you know, Aches maybe, and, and those kind of classic villain characters have moved on, and now Crim6. Yeah, yeah Crim6 always, but people know he's trolling to a degree, right? So they, they kind of, um, yeah. you know, people want someone yeah, to... funny sometimes. Spark a fire with on the timeline, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the second like kind of big topic of the last seven days has been the sniper GA. Another debacle, really, to be honest. Um, yeah. I'm kind of... There's been mixed reports, right, on which teams voted for what and what was said behind the scenes and then what gets said in public when the fans are listening, yeah. all this type of stuff. And um, I think what many are surprised about, kind of like my question on this is, many are surprised that the GA, the, the GA kind of came through quite, at least from our perspective, kind of quickly without like, uh, for example, attachments being tried with no attachments yeah. or with reduced attachments, because that's kind of happened with other weapons that it's been like, okay, this gun's too strong, like, you know, bar yeah. in the World War II, even though you weren't competing then in the pro scene, but, you know, get rid of long barrel, then we can use it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you think there's an element of some teams, if they, you know, lack a great sniper rifle player on their team, such as yourself, they're, I guess, naturally going to be more inclined oh. to maybe say, hey, let's uh, let's get rid of it without maybe trialing some options that could have been had. Uh, I mean, I don't think having a good sniper is part of it. I think the last year or two of the GA chat has really been just everyone trying to make the best of the situations we're given. Uh, or ever since MW, I guess I would say. Not Cold War, like MW-ish. Like, that's really when I've been in the chats. And I feel like it hasn't really been too, too fugaze, too bad since I've been in there. Um... Like, yeah, I, I definitely don't think a Twitter DM is the best space for everything, in my opinion. Like, we definitely got to get a better app or something going on with that. But, like, personally, our team, we didn't really care if snipers were in or out. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll snipe for us if I have to. Like, if it's in, you kind of have to. But, mm -hmm. like, we were kind of down for it to be out. Like, uh, like I said, we didn't really care. But uh, if there's not a sniper, then you can't really get picked randomly. So we were just, like, kind of whatever. Yeah, but, it's an I interesting mean, one. Yeah, yeah I mean, the Sniper J is definitely, like, interesting. I think the smoke one was way more complicated than the Sniper was at the start. But I think there was a lot of underlying, um, like, things that had to be good for people to, like, stick with their vote. Like, uh, a lot of people that, like, changed their vote were saying how if, like, smokes um, were in, they were voting snipers in or something like that. But then, like, it didn't happen until, like, all the, the public Twitter stuff kind of happened. And... I mean, yeah, I mean, snipes are in this year, and I guess tw Twitter clips are going to be tweeted, I don't know. It's about to be a fun year, I guess. Well, hopefully, for sure. Um, yeah, just to kind of piggyback on what you said, because you're like, okay, Twitter DM might not be the best place to do this. Yeah. 
Do you think there's a role for the CDL to play in this? Because of course, look, the pros play the game every day. They understand the game to the best of, um, you know, anyone yeah. who plays the entire game. But at, at the same time, obviously the fans weren't happy, right? And generally people who like to watch the scene, um, who are the content creators or whatever, aren't happy about it. So it's like, do you think the CDL has to come to some ag agreement where, because of course they have the pillars, right? They have the pros, the amateurs, the yeah. community. Like, obviously, the community might not understand the game in the best way, but without the attention of the fans, like, the league doesn't exist, right? So there's there's no, maybe yeah, a better agree. balance to be had there. there definitely, there's definitely a disconnect between all the parties, in my opinion. And I feel like even when we do give our feedback, a lot of the time it's either delayed, like, by a month or two, um, or it's not, really, it's not really acted upon. And it's like, it's not really saying it's anyone's fault, because, you know, obviously we can't have all the control in the world. And sometimes I feel like a lot of the pros expect that when, you know, reality, it's not just how it is. But I do think there needs to be more of an impact that we can have on, like, a lot of decisions being made. Or at least, like, um, not like a say, but, like, just, like, in the conversation, you know? Because, like, you know, the CDR rule set, like, we are with, like, CDR rule sets and stuff. But I, I would really like it if we could, like, get some involvement with like development which is obviously asking a lot but like maybe just like one person as a rep or someone from the league acting upon us in in development just like us having a little bit of input for things as development's going on because once the game's out there's not much we can really do about it i feel that for sure let's dive into then the first event that's going to go on the season of course you know probably not going to count as a championship victory at the yeah. end of the day but still good to win um Kickoff Classic, first match you guys are going to play up against either Seattle or London. Really exciting, to be honest, because both those yeah. teams, I think, uh, not exactly unknown quantities, but both teams that have potential way higher than a lot of their expectations are. Um, yeah. Are you confident in whoever you play here? Do you have a you know, particular preparation? Have you practiced against uh, these opponents a, a lot? Um, well, we stopped screaming. Uh, see, well, we screamed Seattle a lot at the beginning of the game. And then once we saw that we might be playing them first round, we kind of stopped playing them. London was kind of the same way, except we stopped playing them probably like a week after we stopped playing Seattle. Um, so like we haven't really played those two teams so that they can't really get much of our recent VOD. And I mean, yeah, we're super confident going against anyone we play. I mean, last year we kind of smoked everyone. So this year, is if we start off hot, I feel like it'll give us the confidence to start steam run throughout the year. Yeah, absolutely. So this weekend, of course, there's a lot of talk. Yourselves, Optic, Toronto, who's a number one team, right? Yeah. Is there any team that you'd uh, particularly relish the opportunity to beat? Um, I mean, honestly, like, I feel like, I don't know. It's, like, weird because I feel like there's a couple teams that, like, I want to beat, but, like, not, like, rivals, if that makes sense. Like, there's no one in the league that I really see as, like, our opposites, as, like, people trying to be, like, Toronto from last year, maybe, just because they were probably the closest teamwork-wise to us. And skill wise, I feel like there's no one that even stands close to us. But Toronto definitely was the team last year to expose us the most in like situations on like hard points or like blooding us in S and D, like just situations like that. They're so coordinated. And honestly, I feel like this year they'll probably be the same. So hopefully we can just smoke them. That's a good one for sure. So final question, similar kind of kickoff classic type topics here. Who do you think are the top five teams right now? I think it's a tough question, but everybody in the world yeah. seems to have a different opinion on this. It's, um, I mean, it's definitely... The, obviously, the you're going to put yourselves in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean to cut you off, but the problem is um, scrims are so hard to base off of because some teams go harder in one scrim than the other. Some teams, you know, go over stuff and are trying stuff in scrims, so it's so hard to kind of pinpoint when you're actually smoking people and you're not. But, I mean, it would probably be us... Boston. This isn't. This is like uh not an order. Just uh. Yeah. You said it was top five or top four. Top five. Top five. Okay. Yeah. Us. Boston. Optic. Um. Last time we played Seattle, they were really good. And okay, I haven't played Paris in a while. Paris would be a hot take for sure. <laughs> I haven't played in a while. They're not bad. They're not bad this year. Like that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of the teams aren't bad yeah. this year, but it's just like day to day basis. I don't know who the fifth team would be. So decent, like any of the LA teams, they because people say they're um, kind of behind the pace right now. I don't, I don't think either of them are top five. I mean, honestly, I feel like LAT is struggling right now, to be quite mm. honest. I feel, I, I mean, I don't know if it's the players or what, but I feel like 
a lot of the times, like, people just don't care about the game. I'm not saying this happened to them, obviously. I'm just saying in general. Like, they don't care about the game, and so it impacts their performance. Like, I mean, I've seen it happen. It happened with our team at MW, to be honest. I feel like it definitely put us in a slump just because of how the game made us, like, feel, if that makes sense. Like, I know it sounds stupid, but, like, it definitely impacted performance, so. It's 100% the thing. Like, you've seen it with kind of the classic example, I guess, is OGLA in Modern Warfare, right? When they weren't happy yeah. with the game and despite all the great players, they didn't really perform. Like, is it is it kind of a personality thing? Because I think there's, like, what do you think really is the issue there with Thieves then? Because um, some people would say that the likes of even Gunless and Slasher and Asim and Hook, I think a lot of people look at the LAG team and say, wow, those teams, like, that's crazy grinders on that team. Are right? they going to play the game yeah. no matter what? But if they're not enjoying it, might not be the same case. LA Thieves, I think actually a lot of people raise the question, like, is the work ethic there? Especially if the game isn't fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's still the beginning of the year, like the game, so I wouldn't even, or like the beginning of the CDL season, not the beginning of the game. So I wouldn't stress it too hard right now, but there's definitely some teams that need to catch up compared to the teams that have been grinding since day one and like putting in like a lot of work. And honestly, just like, you kind of just have to treat this as a job in a way. Like, even if the game is bad, you just got to suck it up. You gotta you gotta do your best and grind for your team because you know you're on a team. And if you're not putting your best forward, then you're making three other people lose, your coaches, your staff, like everything. So it's just more than how your emotions are towards the game, in my opinion. Absolutely. Well, that will do it. Thank you very much for your time. Any uh, any final word to say to face fans who might be watching before the season? Uh hopefully you guys do enjoy uh the kickoff event. Hopefully you guys, you know, still support us after my tweets. I know I'm an enemy to others but hopefully you guys still like me and yeah hopefully run for a good year fantastic indeed we'll leave it there thanks for watching as always take care we'll see you next time